Hey everyone, this is Suja. Thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to bed, episode number 12. Without further ado, let us start on bed. Uh, so that's the B. So the B stands for Bitcoin, obviously. Bitcoin, the new beginnings, you know. Y'all behave and it'll be... What's a good word for fantastic that starts with B? It'll be the best, right? So... Um, like I said previously, um, Bitcoin's going to be testing this range from the 65,000 to the 77,000 area. But the looks of it, it's kind of, you know, pushing down a little bit, um, tiny bit. Uh, so it might come down to 62,000. Then if it really wants to test this area prior to breaking this area, this liquidity pool area that I have from the Fibonacci, um, it'll come back down to 58,000. And so on. I don't expect it to go anything below fifty-eight thousand, um, but I don't even expect it to come back down much right now. What I'm expecting is I'm expecting it to go further up. And like I said, anytime you see this pattern of oh the blue over the red on the stochastics, it's time for things to go up. So we had a crossing. You know, it's gonna hit this area here, the seventy, the ninety-five point. To nine. If it crosses that, it'll probably just do one of these lines, stay up in that range, and then probably come back down. The only reason I'm I say it'll probably come back down is because I am I am really like thinking about this as terms of shoulder to uh, waist ratio. So one two one two, right? One two three shoulders, one drop, one two. I need another shoulder in this area before you know it goes back up, or I would like for that to happen. I don't know if it'll actually happen. I think there's a likelihood of that happening because I think that pattern is valid. Um, but again, it may not happen that way. Mm. So things look good. Um, maybe a like, slight pull back to 58,000 and then all the way back up. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me. Let's go to Ethereum. By the way, that was just like a normal cough healthy, I'm fine, no one needs to worry about anything. Our boy Ethereum is just nailing it, just killing it, just, oh, I love it. Look at this bad boy right here, like, it's in the zone, all right? It's in this liquidity pool zone that, again, I used the Fibonacci to do. It'll, it's probably going to bounce around between 2200 and 2600 before it breaks and goes further uh, up. Uh, so, you know, and I tell you, anytime I see a hammer, one, two, three bricks usually follow. I'm not sure, you know, I feel like this will be the last brick before we have a slight pullback. So if we're counting bricks, hold on a second. If we're just counting bricks, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bricks before a pullback. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 bricks before a pullback. You know, we might have a couple of, you know, we might have at least a couple of other more bricks before a pullback. So that is just on the Renko. It may not go that way on the actual like candles. The candles will give you different, more nuance, shall we say. The reason why I think um, we might have a pullback after a couple of more bricks is because it looks like it's kind of, kind of tired in this range. Maybe not tired, but it just, it kind of feels like that to me. So it's a feeling. It's not necessarily um, technical analysis, which honestly, a lot of it is kind of feeling. You get a feel for the market and you use the analysis part to sort of justify it, which you shouldn't do. You should use the justificate. You should use the, the analysis to inform your feeling and not the other way around. By the way, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Um, you should look at a, you know, a financial advisor and pay him or her money to you know, deal with your own money if you don't want to deal with it yourself. Uh, I will not be held liable for, liable for anything. This is just me giving my opinion, man, on the internet. And if you think my opinion is um, financial advice, well, I'm telling you right here, right now, it's not. I'm not a financial advisor. No. <laughs> just, you know, you go do your own homework and trade on your own merits and your own skills and your own brain and your own thinking. For me, the goal is obviously to see myself uh, rise and be better at analysis and, you know, play around with different tools and obviously make a little bit of money, obviously, right? Got to make the cash, pay the bills. But yeah, so that's kind of the goal there. So anyways, back to Ethereum. Mm, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It probably will make another shoulder at this 
2600 area. Again, I would like it to come back down to like say 2100 just to test it or roughly, yeah, and then go back up, but it may not go that way. You know, the charts do their own thing. They don't listen to me. <laughs> I wish they did because then I could 100% make money. <laughs> but, you know, you're never really at that level. You can get close though. Okay. So, yeah, that does it for Ethereum. And then, looky, looky, what I tell you guys, I told you 0 0.14, 0 0.112. And look, look where it's going, right? It's just, it's just going this way. So it's going all the way up. Usually when you have a big break like this, there's at least two more of these patterns. So one, two, and then the third one is here. We might actually end up at 0.14 per Dodge coin at some point, but you know, we're playing in this liquidity pool area. According to the price break, we've already broken this liquidity pool. So let's just, let's just move this box to this area right here. So it'll be more easier to see. And if it breaks that area, then obviously, you know, we'll just move our box again and it'll be this area that we're gonna be playing in. So it'll be roughly point, wait, yeah. Yeah, it'll be roughly 0 0.15 and 0 0.128 is gonna be where we're gonna be playing. And again, we can just, the thing about Renko is you can just count the bricks and use that as your way to sort of measure. The movement so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten pull back one two three four five six seven eight nine ten no pull back so that we might have a little bit more oomph to go and one way to sort of check at least for myself is i could use the stochastics the stochastics are powerful um obviously it's not going to be re <laughs> jesus christ stochastics are way up here in the 99 level. Anyways, I could just use the stochastics uh, for me the price break. Yeah, so price break also confirms, right? Once you have this price break, there's divergence between these two. Yeah, it confirms that, you know, you're going to have a bunch of moves. Price break and stokes work really well by the looks of things, right? See, boom, boom. And then it's going back up. So uh, that's one way I could test. Um, are there any other ways I can test? Hmm, there surely is, but am I gonna go through the hassle of it? Probably not. Let's go see the Trollinger bands because yeah, it's above the Trollinger band. I really don't care for Trollinger bands actually. It's called Bollinger bands. MACD, MACD is looking good. Hmm. I wonder if they have network <laughs> they don't have it. They don't have the uh, the same indicator. Okay, MACD. <clears throat> Excuse moi. Okay, so TD sequential. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two more to go before an eighth. Usually, ah, all right, let's see. If there's a f if there's a fifth, there's usually a sixth. So yeah, damn. Looks good. All right, so that's it. Let's see what else. You know what? I'm not gonna use TD sequential. I already have one. I don't need more. Uh, yeah. Yeah, everything looks good for Dogecoin as well. So again, the play area is gonna be this area, 0 0.128 and 0 0.1426. And that about does it for today. Thank you so much for joining. I will be seeing you guys in the next video, episode number 13, which is a fairly good number and a lucky number, apparently. <laughs> so, see you guys. Thank you so much. Um, have a wonderful day, evening, or whatever time frame you're in. Have that. Have your time frame. Bye.